Hey everybody, I'm gonna wait just a few minutes until we get more people on here. Um, but can y'all see the uh, Kenny Rogers picture in the background? That's the one we've been talking about on the radio for quite some time now. And if you don't notice the resemblance, it's uh, actually not Kenny. All right. <laughs> so I was trying to get uh, some different people to call in. And I think that uh, one is going to be River Rat. And uh, I was talking to Paul of Rodriguez about calling in. And so we're just kind of waiting until everybody joins in with us. I'll wait till I get this number to go up a little bit. There's only three people on right now. And I'll go back and cut this off. I talked to Hutt earlier, but he is uh, working on some stuff right now with his mother. So he is tied up this evening. So he couldn't do a call in, but he said we'll do that next time. I really wasn't prepared as far as I wasn't sure if I was going to do the call in again because last time it didn't work out so well. We asked Terry the fence climber. So I'll just wait just a couple more minutes and then we'll get rolling here. Got a few things to talk about today. Not really a lot because, you know, we're not racing in NASCAR right now. Not in the real sense of racing. I'm trying to decide if I even need those glasses. So I can kind of see without them. But it gets a little bit, eh, it gets a little bit tough. Okay. I think I'm going to put them back on. It is hard to see. I'm going to get my hair cut soon. Hint, hint. All right, when I get ready to go, I'll just put my hand up like this. I better move that. And then I'll also tell, yeah, hold on with the, uh, hold on with the phone call. I'll be ready in just a minute. So I'm going to drop it for right now. And then we'll get to you here in just a minute, all right? Okay. Welcome to the NASCAR Live Chat with Ham, the Engine Man. Today is uh, March the 23rd, and they actually did an iRace. What was that? An iRace uh, Pro Series, iRacing Pro Series Invitational, something like that. With uh, on the was that yesterday or the day before? Anyway, if you don't know me, my name is David Ham, 25-year NASCAR engine builder. Recently retired. Actually, it's going to be a year ago already. Uh, time has flown like crazy. NASCAR uh, engine builder, NASCAR Jackman, and I was a Jackman for seven years and owner of Hamscapes Landscaping Equipment Repair Company and radio personality here at WAME 92.9 and 550, which I just had my Monday Country Ham Jam, and I know a lot of my friends here tuned in to that. And we're going to talk today about the NASCAR Cup Xfinity and Church Series news, and I'm getting a phone call. All right, so I'm <laughs> and the announcements, some announcements coming up and a Q&A and a history and bio and uh, some of that kind of stuff we're going to talk about today. So if you hit that subscribe, hit that like button, uh, turn on the bell notification and you uh, can find me on dhamiam.com. That's kind of the link to all my social media, dhamiam.com. And also check out my podcast, Ham the Engine Man. All right. So uh, we're going to have a caller call in now. You can call. Um, I think that was probably River Rat, maybe trying to call my cell phone. I'm not sure. But what I'd like for you to do is call the radio station here, River Rat, and I'll answer this time because now I'm actually ready. So give it a call. And uh, we're going to go into some of this NASCAR news and uh, talk about the iRacing. I want to get y'all's opinions on what y'all think about it. Uh, I already got one question about it. Do you think the iRacing will become more popular? I think it will right now because. There's no other racing on, and people just love racing for what it is. All right. Good afternoon there, River Rat. Yeah. Good, good man. How you doing? And are you using your alias? or? Oh, yeah. Did you get stocked up on your uh, TP? <laughs> oh, man. I hear you. Um, 
So I guess we're getting the same thing again on here. Can't hear him. All right. So what I might do this time is do like I probably that's probably what I, I should do. Like I did what I didn't do with Hut last week. I should have had him call my cell phone and just put that up to the microphone because that's better than nothing. Because I really don't understand why I can't get this figured out. You know. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I might end up doing that. See, I can see you on the Adobe on the computer, but for whatever reason, they can't hear you. So, um, yeah, that's that's probably. Oh, yeah, well, that's fine. Uh, well, yeah, hang on just a second. Let me. Uh, I'm just going to look and see if there's any other buttons that maybe I need to push. I just don't see. Um, I don't really see any other ones that. All right. Yeah, you might as well just try because we're going to waste too much time. If not. Yeah. All right. Give me a call on my cell phone. That'd be fine. All right, bud. All right. Thanks. All right. So, yeah, me and Tracy actually did a test on this right before the show started and um, it didn't work. So anyway. All right. Here it is. I'll put them on speaker so you can hear. All right, there we go. Alrighty then, can you hear me now? Yeah, how about that? We can hear you. That's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> okay, like? Oh yeah, actually, um, all right. So let me see if the, the listeners can hear okay now. How about that? Can y'all hear? How about you? How about you tell your story of? Uh, uh, hold on, you know what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move my microphone. I'm gonna move this other microphone over here. Hold on. Right now, I can't see. I can't see you right now. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's fine. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna turn on another microphone and uh, see if that'll see if we can get that working. All right. Me to a microphone. Yeah, pretty much. There you go. <laughs> All right. How's that? Uh, hey, whatever works, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Maybe that's better quality. I got it turned down just enough. Okay. Well, let's see how that works. Uh, so, why don't you tell us your story about what happened with you in uh, Richmond in 2014, right? What well, well, right down was there's like four guys that Too, I agree. The commentator, however you want to say that, but uh, this, this Dale Jr. fan was sitting directly behind me and he was barking at me and ragging on me about my uh, Kevin Harvick shirt that I had just got, you know, down there at the souvenir stand and he messed around and spilled the beer all over the back of my shirt. Oh. And it was getting ready to be a rumble. I turned around and looked at him I said, the safest place for him if I was sitting on that damn catch runs and he said I didn't have the kindness so I had to <laughs> hold my bitter moment. Uh, I mean, that's how that's how it went down. Wow. <laughs> I, I went cruising down the bleachers pretty much at a run because there was a few openings in the seats, you know, you can step on the seats and down the steps, right? Yeah. I was hauling down out of there and I got right down to the bottom of the grandstands and I noticed the two security had just finished their little patrol they do looking at each other and they had done an about face and was headed away from me. 
each other, and I see them with them. But the cables that are up on from running from one pole to the other is actually what is this? They were um, the shipper type. They're like three quarter inch galvanized cable, maybe three foot apart, just like ladder ropes. So then, you know, what I did was pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you said oh, you said what you did was pretty simple. That's what I was trying to figure out. I thought you were going to explain more on the pretty simple part, but I guess because well, you. Well, I mean, it was. You know, I, I, I'm sort of a retired iron worker. I did a with a steel tarman in my life. I um, we gently bailed out a helicopter, scrolled the sand in my army gig that I did. And uh, the fear of heights, you know what I mean? Anything I fear is that the Lord's not going to let me in heaven, boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I fear that I'm working on making sure I'm respectful and he'll be there. Wow. I didn't realize you were in the military. Yeah, I did 20 years for our country. I was in the Army. I started out my first permanent duty was with the 101st in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And I transferred from there to Fort Riley, Kansas. And Went to a retraining brigade there. After that, I got stationed in Fort Ord, California, where I was like in a ready react unit. We got deployed a lot. We traveled a whole lot. Got to put my hands on the pyramids and the Sphinx and Egypt. Got a little bit of training done in Alaska at the North Warfare Center. Did a the Jungle Operations Training Center in Panama. Wow. I wouldn't take them out of the bag. I've got a little few things I deal with with a therapist through the VA occasionally, but you know, I'm good. That's I, very cool. I, I, I get out on the kayak and I have a church in my kayak sometimes. Give the Lord have a wonderful time. Oh, I guarantee you. Yeah, that's that's awesome. We got uh, Steve Baker says, never tell a veteran that he can't or won't. LOL. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then Zinni says, hoorah. That's why uh, yeah, and then uh, yeah, he's a cop. uh Steve. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if he's telling me the truth or not. I've met Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I rag on him all the time about it. That's why I wasn't sure if he's telling me the truth or not. Because when I met him, uh, we had a good time there. He came down. We went to the race. Uh, Boom and Gray, the Madhouse. Uh, yeah. So that was that was a good time. I was gonna. When do you think, um, do you think you could do that thing we were talking about? You getting up there and. Uh, let me show you the waters over there. Uh, well, as soon as my wife will let me leave for a little while. Which, uh, I guess... I need, to, I need to know about probably... Let's, let, let me know about a week out. Okay, I'll probably... So I can prep everything. I mean, I've got... I know I've got light jackets. You've got the same size as me. I've got the camera in. Yeah. That's enough. But i got jackets and i got boats. i got four nine yards. Yeah. i got to get up here and get in the boat a little bit. Mess around the river. Well, I think I got you by about 50 pounds, though. But <laughs> yeah, like I said, I got you about 50 pounds there. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit bigger than I, maybe the camera takes weight off instead of adds weight, but yeah. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Tracy says, what, what was his M A M O S? 11 B 10 and I had a secondary M O S. Of 63 Tango. They don't call it that now. They've changed all the acronyms. I was a Bradley mechanic. I had my own recovery unit. Well, I would go out and pick up from Dan Bradley, who's doing like a record, and pull him out of the, you know, harm's way and stuff. Oh, okay. Man, that's that's pretty cool. My primary MLS was 11. That's infantry. I was a bush beater, bullet blocker, ground pounder, whatever you want to call it. Hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. they talk. They they teach us how to kill people in so many stupid different ways. Sure. Most most of the time, when you walk up on a tool in the garage and you're thinking about how you're gonna work on an engine load, really, I'm thinking about how metal you can be upside my head. Oh. That, that's what they're working on with me at the VA to try to yeah. make that go away. Oh, I see. Yeah. Not to see everything as a weapon. Oh, okay. I got you. She said. Uh, Tracy said her son was an EO EOD. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and then uh, I, I guess that's, that, that was one of my 
my downfalls in the military. I love to mess with the microbes too much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, simulators, hand grenades, you know, flares. Hmm. They have parachute. They, they got these parachute flares that are really cool that I would like to have when I get kayaking at night. A parachute flare? Shoot the flare up and the parachute pops out. Oh. You know, it's about the size of a um, it lights up. It's a it's about the size of a Gatorade primer. You take the top off of it, put it on the bottom and strap it. It's a primer. Oh. And it's like a uh, one of the candles for right? Okay. And when it gets up, maybe about two, three hundred feet in the air, it eliminates it at the same time a little small parachute keeps it drifting so you can see you know, what's eliminated out in front of your enemies approaching and mm. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Oh, wow, very cool. So, <laughs> man, that's interesting. Uh, and Terry, let's see, Rachel said, uh, oh, heck, I then then scrolled past her comment, but she was basically saying thank you for your service. And also, thank you for protecting America River. Thank you for your courage and service. All right. You know what? When people tell me that, you know what? I tell them back, I say thank you for caring. Yeah. Caring enough to acknowledge that I, at one time, Signed my life away to protect the idiots you see on the TV now. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to touch the subject. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I understand. Uh, Steve Baker says, actually, the engineers blow up crap. The EOD keep it from blowing up. <laughs> you know, the go out there and make it not blow up as correct. Yeah, yeah. I think she, he's probably commenting to uh, Tracy's comment. It's <laughs> explosive ordnance disposal, basically. Yeah, so that's what it was. All right. Well, very cool, man. Are you able to tune in tonight? I don't know if you're able to play this back, though, right? Yes, you will. And, uh, well, however long we stay on there, however long we stay on there, you know, back in, but, um, yeah. let, me, let me tell you um, what happened when they got the cuffs on me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see the rest of that story. They, they, they came over there, and I got up on the fence. If you seen the video, when I threw my arms out, and I looked like Jesus, yeah. that's when I... Realized I had left my phone with the lizards. So I wanted to get, I wanted to get a selfie when Keselowski and Harvick were coming out of turn three and the turn four. Yeah. You would not believe the amount of wind on top of that bench from the race cars. Oh. <laughs> it is wild up there. <laughs> but, uh, I bet. Anyways, I sit up there, they brought out the cars in. So is there like a statute of limitations? Like, let's say you got 10 years behind you and then you can go back? Or did they just say never again? No, it's, it's, it's been for life. Okay. 
I thought I'd remember you saying that. But what I heard, though, is that now Richmond's under new ownership or something oh, because of some NASCAR sanctioning that, that went down or whatever. Something, something I might not have been saying here, right? Somebody bought out some stuff and Richmond was one of those tracks. And I was thinking now that's under new ownership. But see, that's not even a matter. It's the county. Mm -hmm. Of Henrico. Oh, okay. That court ordered me to stay off of the property, and that includes the amphitheater for all the concerts and intervention center. If it's up there that does the boat shows, the gun shows, I can't do none of that on their property anymore. Oh, my gosh. All right. So, if y'all are just tuning in, I'm talking to uh, River Rat, al alias, and uh, he was the one that climbed a fence at Richmond in 2014. And uh, got arrested there, and he's been banned for life, <laughs> which is pretty funny. I mean, really, you could uh, you could use a different name, or I'm sure they don't have a wanted poster around there for you. Don't, don't let this guy the in. Thing, the thing, the thing remains, though, is that if someone does recognize you, yes. I'm looking at five years. Oh, I got you. Yeah, it'd be a federal crime, maybe, or so. <laughs> I got you. Um, <laughs> it's not worth it. Man, I was thinking that they could use it as a publicity deal and make a lot of money off of it and be happy and not be punishing for so much. Yeah, true. <laughs> but they don't want to do that. I mean, you know, with the eye racing and stuff, yeah. it's virtual. Nobody can get hurt. They can have more bad fence climbers in that thing. <laughs> so I saw you. Yeah, I saw you comment about you see me climbing a fence or something. Or, or even that Steve Baker. You know what I said about throwing beer bottles and stuff. You know, let the fans get into it somehow. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. They could figure out a way to let the fans throw some uh, beer bottles, uh, but not, you know, not just about me climbing a fence or whatever. I'm more, you know, I'm interested more about you know, fan participants. Well, how about let the fans uh, change tires or do the jack or something like that instead of something like something, that, something you know, constructive. <laughs> Or spot, even, or even, yeah, even, even, even have it so that you know, um, you could have a right in band wherever you know, some guy's been sitting there playing this thing four or five years, and now he wants to race with the big dogs. You know, like back in the day when y'all was racing, if you could afford to have a car to race, you qualify, you could race, right? Right, yes, you know, just have it so you know, I mean, you got to limit the field. 43 cars, but if Joe Smoke off of the street outdrove one of the guys that qualified in NASCAR, I mean, let him race. Yeah. It's just a simulator. Yeah. I mean, they do it in the movies, too. So, well, yeah, you're, you're right. Absolutely. Uh, Rachel said, well, Terry, let's see. Uh, Rachel, they're talking about some kind of desserts or whatever, but uh, no track should ban a veteran no matter what, is what Rachel says. Uh, and then Terry Quinn says, River Rat, WAME loyal listener. Yes, he is. Yes, yes he is. Yes, yes, uh, yes he is. Uh, Thank you. Thanks to Terry. Terry introduced me to y'all. Yeah, very cool. And I, and I was like, oh, yeah, man, listen. Y'all station plus a couple of music I used to be riding down the road listening to with my daddy. Me and my daddy be riding down. Just me and my daddy. Yeah, I hear that a lot Same from different music. people. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Uh, yeah, his favorite, his favorite was Red River Valley. Oh yeah, I love that. I love it. Uh, yeah, Marty Robbins' version of that yeah, is man. excellent. Yeah. Um, so uh, C. Baker says them virtual hot dogs at Martinsville are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> oh gosh, the old red uh, Martinsville hot dogs. Oh yeah. Anyway. I've never had one. Yeah, you have to go get I've one. Never had one. I've been to Martinsville, but I, I, I have not had one. I was. I got tickets for Martinsville, a bunch of us. There's another um, NASCAR Facebook group called Untamed. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, there's a lot of passion of drivers that go in there, a lot of adult cutting up in there and stuff. But there's a, a gang of us from that group that get together and meet at Richmond more or less every year. But um, we were going to go to Martinsville this year, and it don't look like that's going to happen. Oh, yeah, really. Yep. Everybody's already got your tickets, so I'm thinking that if I can't do Martinsville, my birthday's the weekend of Darlington. There you go. What a better way to spend the birthday, man. Get the band from Darlington, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. All right. It's a joke. 
Oh, I'm sure I do. So, and because you just well, it'd just be another county. You know, you got how many more counties to go in North Carolina? Well, I mean, you can come to North Carolina together. Don't South Carolina. Yes, don't into South Carolina. So, I've only I only know that there's uh, I believe there's a hundred in North Carolina, but I don't know about South Carolina. So, well, this NASCAR really just goes ahead and decides, hell, we don't want you none of our races anymore. Yeah, that could be too. <laughs> I don't know, man. We'll see how it goes. All right. Well, thanks so much for calling, man. And, uh, yeah, you know, get back, get back with me, and we'll discuss that kind of thing in the near future. I'm, I'm going this Wednesday to check on things. Get me up, and uh, we'll get laid out. Laid out. All right. Sounds good, buddy. Talk to you later. Have a good evening, all y'all. All right. You too, man. Thanks. See bye. All right. Very cool. That was uh, our uh, buddy. Yeah, I'll just say River Rat for now because I think he, he just has his alias on here. But he does tune in to WAME Radio uh, pretty much every day, especially in the evenings. Um, so there, that was good. That was entertaining because uh, he's been through some experiences there. And I always wanted to hear the rest of the story. And there you got it. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> All right. So some of the, here we go. On March 17th. NASCAR and iRacing formed the e-race, e-NASCAR Racing iRace Pro International uh, Series, an exhibition of sorts of NASCAR talented and most popular drivers. It will be the drivers from the NASCAR Series Xfinity and out, uh, Gander Outdoor Truck Series. And uh, <laughs> Steve says, play another song. Oops, wrong channel. Yeah, I know. You know what? I actually could probably play some songs on here, but I could play some background music. How's that? I got everything shut off. Um, here's the, the Simeon that's playing automatically, but here's the main board. I could hit put us on air right now if I hit these red buttons that says program, but I'll probably not do it. One of these days, though, that's the plan is to be on the radio, to be to do this show live on the radio, and I see that happening maybe this year, hopefully. So uh, until the cars get back on the uh, on the actual NASCAR racing track, some of the drivers that are involved in it are Dale Jr. and Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Clint Boyer, Kyle Larson, and Christopher Bell, to name a, just a few. But the uh, iRacing, so I want to get y'all's opinion on it. What do you think about the iRacing? I mean, I honestly think I've done it before, actually, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's, and I say it's realistic. I've been in a NASCAR race car going around the track. And to me, it was to me it was pretty realistic. So. Um, of course, you didn't, you know, when the wrecks happen, you can hit a reset and you can start the car. Basically, you get a fresh car and start back again. But NASCAR and iRacing have unpre an unprecedented history in the esports space. Currently in the 11th season, the longest running officially sanctioned esports racing series. It features 40 of the best sim racers in the world competing for more than $300,000. One of the richest payouts in esports racing competition. So William Byron and Ty Majeski have sim racing backgrounds byron hamlin and austin dillon have esports teams that compete in e-race the nascar racing series the racing simulator platform is often used by nascar drivers to prepare for a race so um, and like i said some of those drivers byron and hamlin and, and austin dillon they uh i think that that actually helped them to do better in nascar um, rachel says you got to love the part about nascar you can go up to any fan and enjoy some funny stories and good company. Very true. And, you know, I could see um, River Rat says, I can't bring myself to watch a uh, simulation. It's definitely different. I mean, it's not like the real thing, obviously. Um, but what I was going to say was, I wonder if some of these other sports will take note. You know, they can they get on and play simulated basketball and baseball and football and whatever. And But the deal there is you – you can't have but so many players at one time. Like in an e e racing, you can have you know a forty car field versus in NASCAR. I mean a, a baseball or football. I don't know if you can even if they could even do that. So Danny Hamlin, he won the uh, race this past weekend, and he sent five thousand dollars to the uh, COVID nineteen relief. Garrett Smithley started from the pole. Timmy Hill had the car to beat. For the majority of the race, but in closing laps, Dale Jr. and Denny Hamlin put on a show. So Jimmy Johnson brought out the first caution of the lap 15, getting together with Kurt Busch. Uh, it was kind of amusing seeing some of the veteran drivers getting into these wrecks and maybe kind of not really doing all that well. But of course, Denny Hamlin did very well. 
and Dale Jr. But Jimmy Johnson brought out the first caution on lap 15 after getting together with Kurt Busch. There were two more cautions out by lap 30. The virtual crowd went wild when Jr. took the lead. By lap 39, Kurt Hamlin and Parker Klingerman got together. Lap 45, Yellow was out for Eric Jones. And But they laps remaining. Hill took the lead. Being challenged by Junior, they swapped the lead back and forth, and Junior took over. Hamlin took his car high and passed Junior on a final lap. So Kevin Harvick and Fox Sports will match Hamlin, making it a total $15,000. So they ran out of the top five. Dale Junior finished second to Hamlin. Timmy Hill, Chase Briscoe, and Garrett Smith lead in fifth place. All right, so any comments about that? Uh, Terry says, Rachel, I tipped. Rachel, I tipped over my feet and had a cherry funnel cake go flying through the air. It landed on a man's white t-shirt. Ooh, I left that part about Denny uh, tell NASCAR. Oh, uh, River Rat says, I left out the part about Denny tell NASCAR. Uh, mm. All right. And then River Rat says that if I wanted to play in traffic, they should let me. <laughs> you know, you could actually have your own Frogger episode. Get out there on the track and, and try to dodge race cars and call it. What can we call it? River Rat uh, and, and Frogger. Yeah, what we'll think about that? So, congratulations to, to uh, Dale and Amy Earnhardt and Big Sister Isla on the announcement that they're expecting their second child. Is that their daughter's name? Okay. Uh, due to the coronavirus, all testing not pertaining to the next gen car is banned until further notice. This includes not limited to wind tunnels, climate, climatic tunnels. 7-8 posters, KNC rigs, driver simulations, etc. NASCAR President Steve Phelps had a teleconference on March 17th to talk to reporters regarding the season, financial aid for teams, and more. Uh, NASCAR intends to run every points race, the All-Star race, and plan to run every postponed race before the playoffs. The races that have been made up are on the same geographical geographical area, so it should be easy to pull off. It could be midweight races or double hitters. Uh, so, but yeah, River Rat says Biffles has a new son. Um, yeah, and Biffle, actually, when he came back in a race, he was doing pretty good. I'm expecting my second child, Steve Baker, should be here tomorrow. <laughs> Steve, where do you come up with this stuff, man? You are a trip. All right, so T Tracy says, I saw the video Amy posted when she broke the news to Junior. It was funny. Yeah, I didn't see that one. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have to have to go back and watch that. All right, the cup playoffs began September 6th at Darlington. Phelps said it, it's in consideration to run races without fans. They'll look, they'll work with health officials and infectious disease professionals on having races without or with fans. I mean, you look at it like this. If they're doing this iRacing right now, uh, they, you know, on iRacing, you see a lot of fans in the stands, but obviously there's not fans in the stands, but they're at home watching on TV and on the internet. So, you know, um, why couldn't they do just go run the races without the fans? I mean, if they have to get them in, you know, so we'll see how that works out. They want to make sure all the teams get through this. He says, as for the 2021 next gen car, they are pushing through and forward. This is the only the second time in the, this, this century that races have been delayed for anything more than rain after that was after September 11th in 2001. And that wasn't much because I was traveling then. So, um, but you know, the, uh, I was talking about having, not having the fans in the stands and going racing anyway. You also have to look at the teams and the, the crew members and the people, you know, working in the shop, obviously, that are not, they don't have a job to do right now. So that's the kinds of things that, you know, if they could, if they were at least going racing, they would be using the engines, using the cars, and then that would give those guys, get them back to work. Uh, so the Wood Brothers, a uh, NASCAR team in uh, Stewart, Virginia, took donations throughout the week on their website to buy iPads to donate to Blue Ridge Therapy Connections. And, uh, and the Landmarks Center in Stewart, these tablets would also res uh, would allow residents to video chat with their families while facilities are locked down because of the concerns of the virus. As of Saturday, John Wood, senior vice president and co-owner of the Wood Brothers, said the team raised more than 33500 enough for the 200 tablets so far. Uh, and thanks to the 1,251 individual donations, John said he was literally book, uh, blocked from 
sites like Amazon, eBay, Target, and Best Buy, as he ordered so many in a short time, they probably thought he was buying them to resell. Over 200 tablets for 15 facilities. I believe it's gone up a little more than that uh, as of now. All right, so you got any questions or comments? I was going to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of history, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do with this history in 1979 Daytona 500. I'll talk just a little bit about it, but I'm going to put a video together and I'm going to talk about it in that video and just kind of dissect the race just a little bit. Um, that was one that I remember watching when I was a kid. It was the one where Del Jean, I mean, uh, Del Jean, Donnie Allison and Bobby Allison got in a fight uh, there at the very end with Kelly Arbor. I remember it very well. I believe I was, uh, well, I would have been eight years old at the time, just turned eight at that time. And I remember watching it because we had a big console TV and had a little television on top. And I was like boxing, like I was fighting for for Del, uh, for Kel, Kel Yarber was my favorite driver back then. All right, so Tracy says, uh, Del Jr., he asked how Isla knew the baby was going to be a girl. Uh, all right, so I have to watch that. You got to watch it. Listen for the question that Junior asked Amy, her shirt, and, and said, big sister. He finally said, oh, Isla is a sister, LOL. Yeah, that sounds like something I would do probably. <laughs> All right, yeah, show it to me tonight. That, that's a good deal. Uh, so I hope everybody's staying safe out there through all this, you know, it's kind of craziness. I don't even know what to think at this point. Uh, that would be whole coronavirus epidemic, pandemic now, because it's a worldwide thing. Uh, basically, they say, wash your hands. Uh, don't, you know, wash, keep your hands clean. I mean, obviously, that's, a, that's one. So when you use the gas pumps, Maybe wear gloves, use a towel. If you don't have a um, way to wash your hands, use hand sanitizer um, and drink warm water, that kind of stuff. Tracy says, you're doing it now. As people were asking if there would be a virtual fight, or Steve Baker says, people were asking if there would be a virtual fight, LOL. That would be funny if you could watch that from the iRace. And you know what? That would be funny. They need to add that into the to the racing part of it the drivers can get out and fight what was those the video games i mean i know we had like mike tyson's knockout was one of the games but i'm trying to think of one oh like uh one of those grand grand uh what is that? i don't forgot what it's called where they they're riding through the streets of like new york and l.a wherever they are they can jump out of the cars and go and fight and that kind of stuff that'd be pretty funny all right, so have boy to run 400 miles to go punch Jeff Gordon. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so I, I will talk to this a little bit about, oh, yeah, Grand Theft Auto. That's what it was. Yeah, thanks, Steve and, and River Rat. All right, so 1979, Daytona 500 Hill. Who else was watching that race? It was February 18, 1979. As I said, I was eight years old. Yes, Tracy San Andreas was one of those games. They're actually pretty entertaining. But that race, you know, 1979, Daytona 500, uh, the pole sitter, Buddy Baker, it's his first qualifying win at a speed of 196. Uh, prior to this, this this was the first live televised race. Like, they, they did it from start to finish live versus having it taped and then showing it at a different time. And so... Rookies, uh, okay, Dale Earnhardt Sr. making his first Daytona 500. All right. I didn't, I didn't realize that. So notable notable drivers who failed to make that race that day were James Hilton, Morgan Shepard, and future Hall of Famer Bill Elliott. How about that? Yes, yeah, Steve Baker, number 11. The, uh, that year, 37 cars failed to qualify, withdrew, withdrew or made driver changes meaning there were 78 cars who attempted to make that race. This year, all the cars made the race. I mean, that kind of shows you the contrast in, in that year to now. The most laps led was Donnie Allison with 93 of the 200. Donnie was second car starting on a front row, and he had an engine failure. Back then, there were no penalties for engine failures. You can change the engine and go back out and race. And so that's what they did. But also what helped the, the viewership on that race that was um, there was a booster in the viewership. There was a major snowstorm that hit the Northeast and the Midwest states with 21 inches of snow. Back then, TV 
only had three channels. Yes, I can second that. I lived in Charlotte, lived right beside the airport, and uh, down where Home and Moody uh, race shop is. And yeah, we had three channels, four at the most. I could climb up here on that trailer, turn that antenna, and I could aim it down towards, let's say, Spartanburg, South Carolina direction, and I could pick up another channel just barely there. And then, of course, you turn that little knob. So yeah, I ended up watching that back then. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of a biography together, a little video, and, and then, then I'll introduce it. And I'll actually put it like up here in one of the cards and then y'all can watch that next time. But for now, I'm going to head on out of here because I'm getting tired. I got here at five o'clock this morning and I actually went home and took about a 20 minute nap. I think I was so tired that I kind of kept jumping, woke myself up. And then I did my Monday Country Ham Jam right here on WAME. So if you want to uh, check out my website, dhamiam.com, and you can see all the links to the different things there. Some of my videos, I'm going to work on some more of my uh, posting videos and keep on rolling with my YouTube stuff. And uh, thanks, everybody, so much for tuning in. If you got any questions, throw them out here now. If not... I will be back here on the radio on Thursday. I'm taking Tuesday and Wednesday off. Got a lot of stuff to work on in my shop. Got uh, 47, 47 Buick engine that I need to put together. Got to order parts for it. Got a few lawnmowers to work on. Um, I got a 65 T-Bird and I'm kind of still finishing up actually. Got it down on its wheels. So the majority of it's done and I got a 57 or 56 uh, Ford tractor. To finish up at 640. All right, but anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to hit that like if you like and uh, hit subscribe and all that good stuff. Tell your friends about us. Next time, we'll uh, one of these days, I'm going to get with the engineer here that does all the stuff with the board, and I'm going to get that figured out so that I can take callers and we'll be able to hear them during the live stream. So, yes, thank you, Steve. That T Bird is sweet, convertible too. Yes. Uh, yeah, I got a driveway full of holes to fill in. Ah, oh, gosh, I need to get on that. I'll know that for sure. Uh, thanks, Paul Rodriguez, for tuning in. Steve and Tracy and Terry Quinn. Let's see who else we had. Uh, all right. River Rat, of course. And I'm sure I'm missing a lot of people. Rachel Rodman. All right. And uh, y'all have a uh, great rest of the week. And I'll see you next time. Next time we'll do something for next Monday. Maybe I'll get that other video that I was talking about where the history of the Daytona 1979 Daytona 500. Maybe I'll get that figured out uh, and posted. All right. So have a good night.